Okay, so today's class we will be discussing about the SDS page. So in the last class we have discussed about the agarose gel electrophoresis that is used for separation of DNA, mainly separation of DNA, but sometimes we can also use it for separation of RNA. But uh, uh, for RNA, uh, agarose gel is not used. Instead of that, we use the uh, SDS page, or no, not SDS page, uh, simply the page, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. SDS page is specifically used for photo shot. So I'll show my slides. Okay, so you can see the slide. Okay, so first of all, let us discuss about the principle of the SDS page. Okay, so what is the actual principle of the electrophoresis which we have discussed earlier? So as so the electrophoresis, the gel electrophoresis, the basic principle is same. That is, in this case, the separation of the molecules based on their size. So small size molecule will move faster as compared to the large size molecule, they will move slowly. Okay. So in case of SDS page, okay, so here the electrophoretic separation of denatured protein based on the type. So here what they are talking about the electrophoretic separation that is the separation of the proteins based on their size. So electrophoretic separation of denatured protein okay based on the size. So now uh, we will discuss about it what is meant by denatured proteins. So now you see this particular protein, this is a protein, okay. So you can see that this particular protein, it has, this is a three-dimensional structure of the proteins. So you know, uh, if you just uh, remember from your, uh, you know, the UG classes that uh, uh, proteins, they are having uh, different types of structures like alpha helix, beta sheets and all, okay. So you see this particular part this part of the protein you can see it is a helical protein it is a helical part it is alpha helix so this part is also this part is also alpha helix and you can see this part this part is a beta sheet it is zigzag so beta sheet is like this like this will go so it's how they will form a sheet like structure so this is called beta sheet so So in this case, uh, you can see, uh, let me remove all these things. So what you see is that in this particular protein, okay, it is a combination of alpha helix and beta sheets. Okay, so that is the natural structure of the protein. So natural structure of protein includes all uh, your alpha helix, beta everything. Okay, so now this is the this particular part, this uh, structure of the protein, it is called native structure. M A T -E I B. It is called native structure. Okay. Then, when this protein is opened, so this particular protein that you can see in the right hand side, so this protein is open protein. Here you do not find any secondary structure, you don't find alpha helix or beta sheet. So it's the open form of the protein. So this is called denatured protein. Okay. So denaturation means destruction of the secondary structure and the protein becomes a straight chain. So that straight chain form of the protein, it is called denatured protein. And the process is called denaturation. And reverse, if you just uh, convert the denatured protein into a protein having the actual native structure, it is called renaturation. So now, what it says is that the SDS page electrophoretic separation of the denatured protein. So here, it does not mean the separation of the protein in the native structure. It it says that it is the separation of the protein based on their uh, size of the denatured protein. That means the all the protein that will be separated using SDS page they will be in the denatured form. Okay, fine. Now, why we are using the term denatured form? So, let us go back, go to the uh, whiteboard. Okay, 
see what exactly we mean the linear chart form. Now, for example, you have uh, sorry. So this is the protein having a native structure. This is a native protein. Okay. Now this protein. Okay, and you know this protein. Okay. Uh, the thing is that. The, this is protein one and this is protein two. So if you see the first protein, okay, its length is small, and the second protein, the length is large. But three-dimensional structure or the folded form of the protein, if you find that this structure is smaller than this. But if you open this protein, so this protein is like this, and this protein will be like this. Okay. So now what will happen? If we try to run the protein in the native state, what will happen? Many a times, small size protein will move slowly, and large size protein will move faster. Okay, and there are some other reasons also because in case of electrophoresis, the movement of the uh, proteins, okay, it is based on two things. Number one is the shape. Number two is the size. Okay, but in SBS stage. In this case, what happens? The proteins move only on the basis of their size, not on the basis of their shape, because every proteins are denatured. So there is no shape. All the proteins have got same shape. That means this is so. This form is the denatured protein. Okay. So the uh, this uh, shape of every protein is same, because if you denature uh, all the proteins, they become a straight chain. Okay. So there is no question of shape here. So that, that is why in SPS stage, proteins are separated exclusively based on the size, not on the basis of shape. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Let us go down. Okay. Now we are using the term SPS stage. Okay. Now what is this SPS? So SPS, it is the, it's the extension is the sodium rhodicyl. Sulfate. Okay, so sodium rhodicyl sulfate means so this is the sodium ion, and this particular part of the this uh, compound it is called sodium rhodicyl uh, sulfate, and this is the sodium. Now what happens when this uh, SDS it is put into the water? So what happens? This sodium ion it gets separated. Okay, me. Uh, Show you in the white board again properly. So this is the SDS molecule. Okay. Now when this SDS molecule it is put into the water, so what happens? This sodium ions they get. Separated in the water. So then, this only rhodicyl sulfate remains in the water. And now this rhodicyl sulfate has got negative charge. Okay. So as the S molecule that is dissolved in water. Okay. And that, that means I mean to say is that as the S solution. Okay. As the S molecules in the solution have got negative charge. Okay. So this is the SDS is an anionic detergent in aqueous solution. That means when the SDS is dissolved in water, so it it acquires the negative charge as I have discussed now. Okay. Now how the protein is denatured by SDS? So SDS stage. What is the function of the SDS? So SDS causes the denaturation of the protein. Okay. So that means the native structure of the protein gets destroyed, and the protein, the, this the protein molecule, they open, they open into a straight chain. They become a straight chain. So opening of the protein, it is done by the SDS. Okay. So how the SDS causes the denaturation? Okay. So practically, what happens? This one I am showing. This is a polypeptide chain. Is the protein okay? Because the proteins are made up of amino acids. Okay, so uh, how it works? So this is say uh, okay. Let me show it like this. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
Nanti uh, ya. Yeah. So this is one amino acid. Okay, fine. And then this one is the second amino acid. Okay, and then this one is the third amino acid. And likewise, you have the fourth amino acid this side, and uh, you have another amino acid this side. Okay, fine. So now this part, if I just remove this one, let me remove this. So now this one is the one amino acid and this one. This is called peptide bond. So similarly, here you have the peptide bond. Okay. So and then here you have another peptide bond. Okay. So amino acids they are bonded to each other by peptide bonds. Okay. This is uh, these are all uh, uh, biochemistry things we have studied uh, earlier. We have studied uh, earlier in first year as well as in other classes. Okay. So similarly for this one, this is, this is what we call the peptide bond. Okay. So then, this, this is one amino acid. This is the second amino acid. This is the third amino acid. And this part, which I have rectangles, so these are the bonds. So this is what is the, the structure of it, the denatured structure of a protein. Okay. Trojan present in the this NH group, hydrogen here, here. So this hydrogen is partially positive. That means, you know, the, the free hydrogen, they have got no charge, but hydrogen which is linked to nitrogen always used to have the partial positive charge. Okay. So now this hydrogen is partial positive, this hydrogen is partial positive, this one, this one. Okay. Now, you have added the SDS molecule. So this SDS molecule, it goes and gets attached to okay, this part of the, the NH group, the hydrogen having partially positive charge. And I've already said that SDS has got negative charge. So SDS gets attached to the partial positive charge of the hydrogen here. Okay. So now what happens? You see, so uh, okay. This one is the one amino acid. So you can see that one amino acid is linked to two numbers of SDS molecule. Now what happened, what, what, what you can see is that to all the NH group or to the amino group one, okay, SDS is bound. So this binding is to the electrostatic attraction because hydrogen is partially positive and the SDS is negative. Charge, okay, so now what now now how this binding of the sds causes denaturation let me show you now these sds molecules are bound over here they are having negative charge so what will happen there will be repulsion between the sds molecule so this molecule okay so this molecule it will repel this molecule okay this sds will again repel this molecule this will repel this okay so all these SDS molecule, they will repel each other. Okay. So because of that, what will happen? Uh, so because of that, what is going to happen? There will be a kind of strain. So there will be stress. So because of stress, what will happen? This protein, this peptide will be in the straight chain. Let me show you here. So this is the native structure of the protein. Okay. Now to this native structure, when you added the SDS, so the red molecules are SDS. Once you add the SDS, so what happened? This SDS molecule, they bind the amino acid. They will just bind the amino acid, and then there will be repulsion among them themselves because of the repulsion among the SDS molecules. Okay. So this protein will uh, open. It will become a straight chain. So let me just show you like this. Say you have a, this kind of protein. Okay. You added the SDS. The SDS molecule, they are having negative charge. 
and the peptide bond, the NH group has got positive charge. So the STS go and bind the peptide bond. Okay. So this is how it will happen. You have this kind of structure, and then to that structure, if you have a, this kind of structure, to so this structure, this uh, SDS will go and bind. Once they go and bind these SDS molecules, they will just repel each other. And there will be repulsion. What will happen? This protein, which was having a particular structure, will become a state chain. It will become state chain because the SDS molecules bound there, they will repel each other. Because of the repulsion among the SDS molecule, the protein, which was having a particular structure, it will become a state chain. Am I clear? Yes. Okay. So, the STS molecule, when it binds the protein, so it becomes a straight chain. This is the way. Okay. Okay. Now, the STS molecules cannot perform complete denaturation of the protein because uh, we have shown in the earlier slide that, uh, let me remove this thing. So SDS molecules, once they bind the protein, so they become a they should become a straight chain like this. But many times they do not become a straight chain. The reason is that these proteins they used to have some kind of covalent bonds. So this is so this one is the one covalent bond. This one is the second covalent bond. So this covalent bond it uh, it is formed between the amino acid present over here. And the amino acid present over here. Okay. Amino acid present over here, the amino acid present over here. So, how this bond is formed? What type of bond it is? So, this particular bond is formed by the cysteine amino acid. So, this bond, which you see over here, this is the, uh, this is called disulfide bond. So, disulfide bond is formed between the cysteine amino acid. So, supposing that at this position you have a cysteine amino acid, at this position you have one cysteine amino acid. So, they will form a bond that is called disulfide bond. Say at this position also you had a cysteine amino acid, and here also you had a cysteine amino acid. Okay, so they will form the bond. So, the thing is that to completely open this protein, you must break this disulfide bond. Okay, now how this bond is formed? You see, this is the cysteine amino acid. This this is one cysteine amino acid and this is the second cysteine amino acid. Okay. So something like this, you can say that uh, so one cysteine amino acid is this one, one is this one. Present in, they are far away. If you see in the protein, they are present far away. But still, they are forming the bond. Okay. So in this case, this is one amino acid and this is the another amino acid. Okay. So now they have the sulfur hydryl group. SH group. Okay. So upon oxidation, oxidation means what? Oxidation means removal of the hydrogen. So once the hydrogen is removed from here, this hydrogen and this hydrogen is removed. So now they become, they, they, these two sulfur, the bond becomes free and then they form the disulfide bond. So this is called, this bond is called disulfide. So this kind of disulfide bond is formed over here. Okay. And the problem is that the SDS cannot break the disulfide bond. So to completely denature the protein, the disulfide bond will have to be broken. Okay. So SDS cannot break this bond. So for this, what is required is that we use, so this is the, I have shown it another way. So this is the protein. Okay. Fine. And at uh, this is uh, cysteine amino acid, this is the cysteine amino acid over here. So these two form the bond, the sulfide bond. Similarly, uh, at this position, this cysteine is there. So it forms the sulfide bond. Okay. Now you want to break this sulfide bond, then only the protein will open completely. Okay. So to break the sulfide bond, we must use a compound called either beta mercaptor canal or we can use diethetol. So these two compounds, what they do, okay, they put the hydrogen, okay, when they, when they put the hydrogen, then what happens, this bond gets broken and the SH, they form the SH. That means, uh, if I just, that means if you just uh, look into this reaction, 
will be clear so what you see is that in this reaction okay upon oxidation okay the sulfide bond is formed and when you do the, the when you do the reduction reduction means what addition of hydrogen then this bond gets broken okay so now we want this reaction to occur okay that means we will have to give the hydrogen to break this disulfide bond so this hydrogen is provided by the beta mercaptoethanol or diethanol when you add this what happen this bond gets broken okay so then upon addition of bme this bond gets broken so it was like this you add bme or ptt this uh, bond gets broken and then it completely opens the protein okay now sds page has got two types of gel see in case of agro gel you have only one type of gel but in uh, sds page you have two types of gel so one gel it is called stacking gel and the second gel is called separating gel so the stacking gel it used to have the ph of 6.8 and the separating gel used to have the ph of 8.8 okay because why we are using separating gel ph 8.8 just to make keep the proteins in negative charge so all majority of the uh, that would say all the proteins denatured proteins they have negative charge when the ph is uh, 8.8 or above 8.8 okay so that means in alkaline ph all the proteins to ensure that all the proteins they remain in the negative charge okay so now you have this so this is the gel so first gel this is called breaking gel and this is called uh, separating gel so actual separation of the proteins occur in the separating gel not in the stacking gel okay so stacking gel the proteins only stack i'll tell you what it is okay and then you have buffer buffer means it is an electrolyte solution say in case of uh, agro gel electrophoresis we had the tie buffer and tbe buffer so in this case we have a buffer so its ph used to be at 8.3 okay at this ph this uh, this uh, uh, buffer is maintained so this buffer contains the electrolyte solution okay that helps in movement of the protein inside the gel okay so we keep, so now you see we have uh, so we have two types of gel one is called horizontal gel so the gel which is used in case of agro gel it is called horizontal electrophoresis so the gel used in agro gel is called horizontal electrophoresis that means here what happens your gel is like this you will place a dna here so from cathode to anode dna will move like this in case of sds stage it is called vertical gel vertical gel means you will put the protein in upper side your cathode is in upper side and your protein will move down so anode is in down side that is why it is called vertical electrophoresis so as you can see here the stacking gel it used to be the upper gel and lower gel is the separating gel okay so you have uh, this uh, ta this uh, buffer or the electrolyte solution it is present in the upper as well as in the lower chamber okay and there is a continuity between these two uh, buffers through this gel okay okay now what happens in the stacking gel once you load the protein because you have a say in your test in your tube you have a proteins of different size okay now when, when once you you have a mixture of proteins of different size then you load the protein into the well so these are the wells this is a stacking gel okay so in the well once you load the protein so what happen these proteins they just remain scattered like this okay so then stacking gel what happen these proteins they get stacked like this initially by once you put the protein the proteins will remain like like this and then after some time they will stack that means they will come together okay and then 
once they come together this is this is called the, the proteins are stacked after that they will enter into uh, after that the uh, this uh, proteins will enter into the separating gel where they will be separated based on their size so remember that in the stacking gel the proteins do not separate its main function is to stack the proteins that means once you load the protein into a well okay so your proteins are scattered so in stacking gel these proteins they will stack like this okay and then they will enter into the separating gel so your protein they have put the proteins now they will stack after that they will enter into the separating gel where they will separate based on their size small size protein will move faster large size will move slow in stacking gel there is no separation because in stacking gel the pore size is very big so the proteins small protein and big proteins do not face any resistance they just move freely but in separating gel they cannot move freely so there what will happen the smaller protein will move fast and the larger protein will move slowly okay so this is what is the stacking gel so we'll just uh, talk briefly how this stacking occurs so the stacking gel concentrates the protein into a sharp band okay now what is i mean by concentration that uh, concentration means your proteins were like this and then they were concentrated it was stacked okay into a sharp band so this is called sharp band okay then by utilizing the difference in the ionic strength and ph difference between stacking gel and leptophoresis occur the pore size of the stacking gel is big enough to allow free movement of the we'll talk about it now here what happens this is the uh, physics of how the uh, stacking occurs so here in case of uh, your uh, in case of uh, uh, the electrolyte solution okay the electrolyte solution it used to have a glycinate ions okay then the protein sds complex that means the protein that contains the sds molecule it is called protein sds complex okay and the chloride ions are also there in the uh, electrolyte solution so the first component and the, I mean, the first component and the third component they are present in the electrolyte solution okay now what is meant by electrophoretic mobility so electrophoretic mobility means the movement of the molecules inside the electric field okay although these things are they are present inside the stacking gel okay but their movement is not restricted by the gel pores because the pores of the stacking gel are very large okay so they do not cause any hindrance to the movement of the uh, these three components they just move freely okay so now we need to understand that what is electrophoretic mobility electrophoretic mobility means when you do not have any resistance okay then which molecule will move fast see inside the gel okay those molecules will move faster which are smaller in size those which are bigger in size they will move slowly okay but when you put these molecules in a uh, gel where pore size is very big so in that case all the molecules they just move freely so in that case still some molecules will move faster than the other molecule that means the molecules have got higher electrophoretic mobility they will move faster okay now normally what happens this uh, chloride ions they have the highest electrophoretic mobility okay their protein sds complex their electrophoretic mobility is less than chloride ions and glycinate has got the least electrophoretic mobility okay so this is the uh, 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 we have placed the molecules based on their uh, electrophoretic mobility okay now there is a point here the electrophoretic mobility is inversely proportional to the concentration 
That means if you have high concentration, leptophoretic mobility becomes less. It will become, uh, uh, it will become slow. Okay. Now the point is that now the thing is that what we are seeing is that these three compound, these three molecules, they will move in the different different speed. But the point is that once these compounds they are present in an electric field, they must travel with the equal speed. Okay. If they do not travel in the equal speed, the circuit will break. Okay. So now what will happen? These three molecules they will try to move in the same speed. But to move in the same speed, they cannot move because the chloride ions will move faster and this protein SDS will move slower and the glycinate will move, move even slower. Okay. Now what they will do, I show you one uh, formula that electrophoretic mobility is inversely proportional to concentration. Okay. But the glycinate ions they move very slow. Okay, and protein SGS complex move faster and the chloride faster. So this chloride and the protein SGS complex they will make their movement slow. So in order to make the movement of the protein SGS complex slow, what they will do? They will have to increase their concentration because as per this formula, when you increase the concentration, electrophoretic mobility will decrease. So this and this, they are to decrease their electrophoretic mobility. So how they will they decrease? They will decrease electrophoretic mobility by increasing the concentration. Okay. So in this case, what will happen? The chloride and protein SDS complex will increase their concentration so that their speed becomes equal to that of the glycinate ion. Okay. So now the concentration of the chloride ion is not of our interest. Our interest is only this one, protein SDS complex. Its concentration should increase. That means what it means is that the chloride ions, they will stack. Concentration means stacking. They will stack. That's to decrease their electrophoretic mobility. Similarly, the protein SDS complex also will stack just to decrease the electrophoretic mobility so that they can move along with the glycinate ions. Am I clear? Am I, yeah. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. There is a chat option also here. So you can type also something if you don't understand. Okay, no problem. Okay. So this is how the staking occurs. So now uh, once the chloride and the protein SDS complex, they increase their concentration. So the electrophoretic mobility of chloride ions, protein SDS complex and glycinate, they become equal. Okay. This is how this uh, protein has this complex, they will increase their concentration. They will stack. Okay. Now stacking gel to separating gel. Okay. After the after the stacking, this protein has this complex will enter into the separating gel. Now the separating gel, the pore size is smaller as compared to the stacking gel. So what will happen in this case? The movement of the protein will be based on their size. Okay, fine. Now this is the gel composition. See, the agarose gel is easy to make. Just take the agarose, add it into the buffer, boil it, finish. But the LDS page is a bit difficult. Difficult is not difficult. I mean, it is a bit time consuming. Okay, so the first component is the water, then this is the 30% acrylamide solution, then tris buffer. So tris actually it acts as a buffer. You remember that in case of PI buffer, also we use the tris. So there the tris maintains the pH. So here also the tris will be used to maintain the pH. So same tris is used in case of sticking gel as well as in the separating gel. In the sticking gel, the tris maintains the pH of 6.8. In the sticking gel, tris maintains the pH of 8.8. 8. 
and then uh, you have the SDS. Okay, so SDS, you know, it is used for denaturation, and then you have the ammonium sulfate and timid. So these two are involved in the gel formation. So in this case, the acrylamide will not form the gel by boiling. Agarose forms the gel by boiling, but here it is a chemical process. So gel formation will occur after addition of these two compounds, the ammonium persulfate and the timid. So the first component, let me remove this. The first component that is the uh, sorry, the, that is the 30% acrylamide. So 30% acrylamide means it contains acrylamide 29%, bisacrylamide 1%. That makes it 30%. That means if you are making a 100 ml solution, you will take 29 grams of the acrylamide, 1 gram of the bisacrylamide, and then you will add water up to 100 ml. So this is the acrylamide, actually it is a monomer and this acrylamide it is a dimer. So same acrylamide it is present is a dimeric form. Okay. So this acrylamide it is also called cross linker. So now I'll show you how the gel formation occurs here. So here what happens? This is the free radicals, okay. Generation of the free radicals by timid. So if you see here you have ammonium persulfate and timid. So ammonium persulfate actually it generates the free radical. So free radicals are generated by the ammonium persulfate. So this is the free radicals produced by the ammonium persulfate. And this particular reaction, generation of the free radicals by the ammonium persulfate, it is helped by timid. So timid acts as a catalyst. This uh, ammonium persulfate. So this generates the free radicals. So generation of the free radicals is a reaction. This reaction is stimulated by this timid. Timid acts as a catalyst here. Okay. So what happens? This uh, timid it generates the free radicals from the ammonium persulfate, and this free radicals. Okay, they go and bind the this, uh, this is the free radical. The free radical will transfer its negative charge to the acrylamide. Okay, then this acrylamide monomer it becomes activated. After activation, it will this is the uh, acrylamide. Okay, so this this uh, this activated acrylamide this will bind this will join with another acrylamide monomer. This acrylamide monomer, the next acrylamide monomer also will become activated. So this is how the reaction will go on. So then it will form a chain. Okay, fine. So now this is the uh, so this one is the acrylamide and this one is the mixed acrylamide. Okay. So now same way the acrylamide and mixed acrylamide they will join. Okay. So now you see this is the if you, sorry, if you see in this case, so these are the acrylamide monomers, the black one and red one are the bisacrylamide. Okay, so acrylamide monomer will form like this, and the bisacrylamide will join this way. So bisacrylamide, what you can see here, is acting as a cross linker. Cross linker means because if you forget to add bisacrylamide. What will happen if you suppose so if you forget to add bisacrylamide, then what will happen? All the acrylamide monomers they will form this kind of chains. Okay, but the chain formation is not enough. What is important is that these chains. They should be cross-linked this way. The cross-linking is required. Okay. 
So this cross-linking of these chains, it is done by the bisacalamide. What I can show here, here the cross-linking is done by the bisacalamide. So that is why bisacalamide, it acts as a cross-linker of the chains. And that is how it forms the network. Okay. And this part, you can say it is a pole to which the proteins will go. These are the pore. Okay. These are the pore. So this is how. Okay. This is one gel. Okay. Net network. So this is one pore. This is a one pore. So through these pores, the proteins will pass through. So now you have a net network like structure. With the red part is the cross linker. The black one is the your acrylamide chain. Okay. Now we talk about the sample preparation. See, if you just uh, put the protein directly into the uh, this uh, as just page well, it will not separate anything. So first of all, you have to take the protein solution, okay, and you'll have to add the sample buffer into the protein solution. Okay. So this is the composition of the sample buffer. Okay. So sample buffer it contains the tris. Tris it acts as a buffer. And it maintains the pH of 6.8. Now you see, if you just go back to our earlier slide, you see here the wells, these are the wells, okay, where the proteins are loaded. Okay. Now these wells are made in the staking gel. Okay. The staking gel, the pH is 6.8. That means the proteins which are to be added over here, these proteins, uh, they should have the pH of 6.8. Okay, so that is why the sample buffer is the so the sample buffer it should contain the this okay having the pH of 6.8. Okay, if it pH is different, then what will happen? There will be pH difference. So that is why its pH should be equal to that of the staking gel, where it will be loaded first. Then the second thing is SDS. So I've already said that SDS, it helps in denaturation of the protein. Then second one is the beta mercaptoethanol. So beta mercaptoethanol, it helps in breaking the disulfide bond. Okay. Then glycerol. What the glycerol do here? See, you know that in case of uh, uh, sample preparation of DNA, we use the sucrose. Sucrose increases the density of the DNA so that they will. So sucrose increases the density of the DNA so that the DNA it will settle down into the bottom of the well. Same thing is here in case of protein we are using the glycerol. So glycerol, what it will do? Glycerol will increase the density of the protein <coughs> so that once you load the protein, the protein sample will. Settle down into the bottom of the well. That is why we are using the glycerol here. Okay. Then next is the bromophenol blue. So bromophenol blue, it acts as a tracking dye. So bromophenol blue. So this acts as a Tracking dye, okay, and the glycerol. Excess. Uh, it increases the density of proteins. And then the beta mercaptoethanol. I have already said it will break the disulfide bond. Okay, then this one. Now, electrode buffer. Now, what is electrode buffer here? So, just like in case of DNA, I mean, in case of agrogel electrophoresis, we are using the TAE buffer or TBE buffer. So, similarly, here we are using the electrode buffer. So, electrode buffer, its function, it acts as an electrolyte. Okay. So, the tris. Uh, So 
Okay, so here the uh, let me. So this it acts as a buffer that so this maintains the pH at 8.3. Then comes is the glycine. So glycine, we have already said we have we have discussed about the stacking. Okay. So stacking the glycine near we discussed about glycine and the protein SDS complex. So that means the glycine helps in stacking of the PRO proteins in stacking chain. Then comes is the SDS. You see the SDS was there in the sample buffer also. So what is the need of SDS in the electrode buffer? So in the electrode buffer, SDS helps in maintaining the proteins in miniature. That means SDS helps in maintaining the proteins in the miniature space. What I mean to say is that, say in the sample, you have taken a protein solution. To that, you have added the sample buffer that contains SDS, beta, multiplication, all the things. Okay, then you mix it and then you can load it into the uh, gel. Okay, now your protein is denatured because the sample buffer contains SDS. So it's denatured. But after running it to the gel, your protein may again renature. That means your protein was denatured, but open. Okay, so denatured. Once it enters the gel, Inside the gel, the protein may become renatured. To prevent the renaturation of the protein inside the gel, what is done? SPS is added to the electrolyte solution so that the protein, throughout its movement inside the gel, it will not renature. It will remain in the denatured state. It will not renature. Okay, that is why SPS is added into the electrolyte solution. And apart from that, uh, this uh, glycine actually it helps in stacking uh, of the protein, and also glycine it acts as electrolyte. See, we have there, there seen in case of a PAE buffer, the acetic acid acts as a electrolyte in case of agarose gel electrophoresis. Now, in this case, in case of SBS, which the glycine acts as a electrolyte. So, glycine has got two functions. Number one, it helps in stacking of the proteins in the stacking gel. Number two, it, it acts as an electrolyte. Okay. Then you have the SDS. So SDS, it helps in maintaining the proteins in the denatured state. And apart from that, uh, SDS may also act as an electrolyte because SDS has got negative charge. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let's go down. Now, after running the gel, okay, you have to stain the gel. Okay, so how to stain the gel? Okay, so we have two methods. That means what I mean to say is that uh, let me take you to the whiteboard. So, this is the Let's say uh, so. Let's say this one is the stacking gel. Okay, and uh, let us assume that this one is the separating gel. Okay, so now once the proteins you have you have added the uh, this. Uh, these are the wells over here. So now you have added the proteins into the wells. Okay. Now these proteins they were scattered. Then after that, all of the proteins they have stacked. After stacking, okay, they will enter the separating gel, and then these proteins they will separate based on their size. Okay. 
so now after separation of the proteins okay now you want to view the separated proteins okay how you can view because just like in case of dna you cannot see the dna you will have to stain the dna with cerium bromide similarly here also you cannot see the proteins so to see the proteins you will have to stain the proteins okay so after uh, you have put the proteins over here then you switch on the electrophoresis so towards you can say that uh, towards this side you had the uh, cathode this side you had the anode so after separation of proteins then you put this gel into the staining solution okay so you have two types of staining one is the silver stain and another one is the commasive brilliant blue stain okay so in among these two the silver stain has got higher sensitivity that means it can detect the proteins even up to 0.1 nanograms but the commasive brilliant blue will detect the it will stain the protein only when the protein is more than 0.1 microgram so in our lab generally we are doing this this one because the, we don't have any protein which has a uh, very less concentration suppose that you are using a protein sample where concentration is very very less so in that case if you run the commasive billion blue stain okay after staining you will not find any protein that means proteins are there but you are unable to view the protein because your commasive billion blue stain okay it could not stain the protein because the proteins were less than 0.1 microgram so in that case you should go for silver staining so silver staining is a long process and it is quite tiresome process but this process is to be used only when your sample has got very small amount of protein okay now you say after running the gel your the after running the protein in the sds page your gel will look like this okay so you see here this is uh, these are called bands so this area we you see by the black okay the, this black portion is a protein this is one protein then this is one protein this is one protein so you can just count how many protein was there was there in your sample say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 like that so these many proteins were there and you see this side you had the cathode and this side you had the anode okay so after running the gel they kept the gel in the commasive brillian blue staining and this is the result of the staining okay so you see this protein it is a bigger protein and say this protein is a small smaller protein okay and apart from that what you what you see here is that let me erase the things what you see here is that this particular protein it is this particular band is very dark okay then this particular band is very light so why some proteins are showing dark band and some proteins are showing light band okay it depends upon the concentration so that means this particular band okay which you are showing the dark band it is having a higher concentration and do this protein this band which is very light faint band so here protein concentration is less so you can find out that which protein is higher in concentration that means if you run if you run the serum proteins so serum has got many proteins like uh, albumin globulin uh, many things are there so you know that the albumin protein is highest in serum so the band of the albumin will be very dark as compared to other protein other bands will be light because they are in less concentration okay so uh, what i do is that in the next class i will show you how to determine the uh, this thing uh, the, the molecular weight of the uh, sgs page gel this i will show you in the next class uh, okay uh, all of you can turn on your uh, 
Okay, uh, let me stop the recording first.